Hi again, everyone. Um, so, Rob, David, I wanted to um, talk about your working relationship, which is sort of our mission today, but I wanted to um, spend a little time and let people know a little bit more about who you are as individuals as well. So, Rob, what I know about you is you worked in business development during the last sort of dot-com boom, yeah. and then you went on to found a law group, which I think is really interesting. Um, and then, then you know, several years later, Cabbage was born. So maybe tell us a little bit about what you led, led you to Cabbage and that path. Sure, absolutely. Well, I, you know, it, it, and I, I often get ridiculed for, for having a legal background, but um, I've really always been an entrepreneur, kid who at the age of eight and nine carried around a book with my ideas in it, mostly terrible ideas, um, actually all terrible ideas. Uh, and um, what led me to Cabbage was I, I really was working with um, a variety of companies that were doing some interesting things. One company was pulling down uh, data from online marketplaces to identify counterfeit and fraudulent products sold online. Um, other companies were um, in the security space. And so I was, I was thinking about um, how that kind of data, the real-time data access from online marketplaces could be utilized uh, for other purposes. And, and the purpose that sort of occurred to me was to understand um, the credit worthiness of the small businesses that sold over online marketplaces. So the first iteration of Cabbage was really focused on funding businesses that were selling over places like eBay and Amazon uh, and Etsy and Yahoo and all sorts of other sites, uh, but has since expanded to include really all small businesses. And, and think of these small businesses as um, you know, your, your retailers, your dry cleaners, your restaurants, your contractors, lawyers, doctors, you name it, um, we've served them. Uh, and so we'll get into many more specifics. David, you led global partnerships for Android, and you worked for Nakesh Arora, who basically said when he left to go to SoftBank, he brought you along. Um, and then you joined the Vision Fund. Did you, did you join the Vision Fund immediately, or tell me a little bit about your experience at Google and coming over to SoftBank? And sure. Um, so, so, in fact, the Vision Fund is something quite recent. Uh, I've been working for SoftBank for four years. And prior to that, I've been working for Google for 10 years. Uh, so you're right. Uh, the last role I had there was to lead uh, business development for Android globally. And I was, I was as well doing like business development for pretty much every Google product except YouTube outside of the US. So that offered me like a great insight into how to do business in many countries for many different products. Great. And then how did the two of you come together? You've, you've now invested how much? You've raised $500 million. How much of that is from SoftBank? So the, so the last round was $250 million, but actually I, I first met SoftBank through a venture fund that they had called SoftBank Capital, who okay. uh, led our D round uh, in March of 2014. That was a $50 million round. Were you involved in SoftBank Capital? No. No, I wasn't, no. Okay. I, I didn't join SoftBank back then. Okay. But that was, the, that was my first connection, uh, you know, I, and I, I got to know David after that, after that time. Okay, great. And so on our side, you know, the way I met Rob was that... Uh, when, when I joined SoftBank, I, I'm looking at two areas within SoftBank. One is FinTech. The other one is mobility, the future of transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, two areas that I was very interested in before joining SoftBank, in fact. So when I joined in, uh, I started to look at the FinTech sectors, mm -hmm. and we started to map like every company out there that was kind of changing the game in FinTech, uh, and we mapped out Cabbage. Uh, and so we, we went out and met like, you know, tens of CEOs trying to understand their business, et cetera. And Cabbage was, uh, you know, uh, an easy introduction because, you know, a previous fund of SoftBank had invested in them. And so that's, that's how we met. So, and I think it's interesting, and just so people caught that, I think it's interesting that you've led a lot of the charge behind, behind the self-driving investments that everybody talks about at SoftBank. How, how much, as well as FinTech, how much of your time would you say uh, is, do you sort of like divide your time evenly between them, or how much of your time do you spend thinking about FinTech, and how big an interest is this for SoftBank? Well, I guess uh, there are times that are, I'm more focused on one sector than the other, but I, I will split my time fairly evenly between those two sectors mm -hmm. uh, and trying to find opportunities. Um, and so w what I do there is that, you know, meeting new companies, trying to uh, find companies that we can invest in, mm -hmm. and then uh, when we have invested, I kind of, you know, sit on the board of those companies to help them grow through the next phase. Right. Um, and so between fintech and, you know, future of transportation, uh, it depends. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you kind of read the paper recently. There's a lot of action in the future of transportation, rivaling 
uh, sectors those days. Mm -hmm. uh, so it keeps us like fairly busy, yes. Right, right, right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about cabbage. So I was telling Rob, you know, there's everybody's been sort of following this online lending trend, but I think some of the companies sort of seem to blend together, and some of them have not done so well. Cabbage seems to be doing fairly well. So tell me a little bit about what, what, what you're doing exactly and what you seem to be getting right. Sure. So, so the, the basic premise of Cabbage was to have small business owners land on cabbage.com and actually give us access directly to um, key companies with whom they work uh, and the data related to those companies. So think about it as bank data, payment processing information, um, social, shipping, accounting, uh, web analytics. And by getting this data um, on a real-time basis, not just at the time they qualify, but on a persistent basis thereafter, you're able to understand how that business is performing today and every day thereafter. And one of the big challenges uh, in small business lending previously um, was this ability to understand how a business was operating at any point in time, because the life cycle of a small business is very volatile, um, cash flow can be very lumpy. And so understanding how that ebbs and flows is, is critical to serving a small business. Is that a hard sell? I mean, t telling the small business owner, we need access to all of your cloud services, for example. I mean, is that a hurdle? And, and if so, how do you overcome it? So, so initially, I think in, in 2009, 2010, when we were starting up the concept and we launched in beta in 2010, um, it was a little bit more so than it is today. But, but really today, it's, it's like logging in with Facebook, which is the same experience that all of you have when you log into a website with Facebook. Um, they log into their various data sources with Cabbage. Uh, and one really important decision we made early on, which I actually think is the difference between Cabbage being where it is and Cabbage being where maybe some of the other online lenders are, is the fact that we required you to give us access to data to serve you. Uh, and um, early on, some early, early potential investors said, hey, we see some drop off here when you ask them to give us access, when you ask a small business owner to give us access to data, to give you access to data, why don't you just give them a manual option as well? And as my theory goes, if you ask 100 small business owners whether they will give you manual or, or electronic access, um, 80 of them will go manual just because they're used to it, and 20 will go electronic, you'll get 100% of your customers, that's great. Uh, but for us, we say, look, if you want a loan from Cabbage, it has to be electronic. Um, and guess what? 85 or 90 give us access and 10 disappear. But we have access to 100% of our customers' data electronically, which is really important for understanding them not just for lending purposes, but understanding how that business is performing for a wide variety of services and products that we can provide to them both now and in, in the future. So um, one of the things about Cabbage I think is interesting is that the, you know, the, these data streams include social media. So can you explain to people what, you're, what signals you're looking for? I mean, I can understand the contractor agreements and you know, a lot of other stuff, but what are you getting from that signal? So, so um, to clear up a misconception, we don't lend just based off of Facebook likes or, or anything like that. But what we realized, and we launched it in September 2011 and came up with a really clever name called Social Climbing. Um, where we basically said, give us access to social data, we'll see the level of activity you have, and based on that, we can give you incremental cash. Uh, and um, the idea really is, is small businesses use Facebook and Twitter as examples um, for their customer relationship management software. That's how they keep in touch with their customers. And so the theory was, if you're keeping in touch with your customers, you're probably running a better business than somebody who's not giving us access to that data. And it's actually turned out, we've seen that active um, small, you know, small business customers who are active with their customers through social media are on average around 20% less delinquent than those that are not. That's interesting. And David, I assume that all this data is sort of the most compelling part of the story for you, or am I wrong? No, you're, you're right. Um, at SoftBank, I thought it was me. Yeah, well, <laughs> part of it as well. Um, so no, at SoftBank, we, we think um, we are on the cusp of like a new kind of industrial revolution, where big data, machine learning, AI, robotic play a huge role. Um, and so what, what Rob and, and the team uh, have created at Cabbage is how to use smart lizard data to help SMBs out there. Um, so there's a few things that interested us. One, the smart use of data in an intelligent fashion. Like Rob was mentioning, not data is created equal. And so they have a system which kind of make use uh, uh, of the right data. Um, then B, um, we thought it was very interesting because it is helping SMBs as well. So, you know, there is, I, you know, you, you'll correct me on the numbers, but I think there's around like 200 billion of like outstanding loans for SMB in the US. Uh, you but said, you said 200 million? 200 SMBs? billions. Oh, okay. okay. 
Uh, and I would think there is, you know, a lot of uh, businesses that can't get a loan because it's not exactly uh, very good for banks to do those loans. They are not equipped to do small loans. Mm -hmm. They are not equipped to kind of get the, the right type of information. And when they are, uh, when it's economical for them to do so, um, they often take a long time. They don't provide like the right interest rate. Mm -hmm. And that's where like Rob and the team at Cabbage is helping. And, and we believe this, this is creating good out there. This is creating job at the end of the day. And so tell me a little bit more about just some metrics that might be interesting to the audience and I, I'd like to know. Um, what is the average sort of loan size? How long does it take for people to pay the loan back? Uh, what interest rates are you charging? So we, we put out about $4 billion to date. Um, we do it, it's, it's, these are small businesses. So again, they're your dry cleaners, your restaurants. Um, our average line size, line of credit, is about 25,000. Our average loan size is six or 7,000, but an average customer takes six to seven of those loans each year, every year, so they're doing $40,000 in borrowings a year, and we've had customers on the books since 2011 that are doing, that are borrowing more from us today than they were then. Um, we did over 200,000 lending transactions last year. We'll do many, many more this year and, and, and still more next year. Um, our interest rates range from the, the sort of lower to mid-teens and up. Uh, and again, this is capital that is paid back. Typically, those loan and the, that loan size I mentioned is paid back either in 6, 12, or 18 months. And our line sizes range all the way from a low of $2,000 all the way up to $250,000. Is there any penalty for paying it early? No. Uh, in fact, there's a prepayment benefit, and that's really important, which is the way most small business lending companies have operated to date, um, they quote you a rate for the amount that you borrow on day one, and if you pay them back in a day or six months, you pay back the same amount. If you pay us back early, you actually cut your interest off then, uh, and you actually have a benefit that you don't have to pay any of the fees that you know, would have otherwise been associated with extending that loan to the full term. So I think I'd read in the Times, but this was possibly alternate information, or maybe it's still accurate, that you're, you're basically, they're paying their interest on a sort of a daily rate. So it That's becomes, actually not us. We've been, some, okay. some do that on a daily rate, so some do daily repayment. But the reason they've done daily repayment, most of the companies out there, is because they don't have visibility into how that business is doing. So they, they felt by taking small pieces every single day that that would be a more efficient way to get uh, repayment of the loan. Mm -hmm. We take it on a monthly basis, but we actually look in and we're able to see the data in the account every single day, mm -hmm. frankly, every hour. Uh, and so we know how that business is performing, and mm -hmm. so we don't have to rely on daily repayment to, to feel comfortable that that business is still um, able to repay us. Okay. And so, I mean, just to echo what Rob just said is, this is something we loved. This is using data in a differentiated way to create a new product. Mm -hmm. That line of credit, like loans product for SMB, was not existing mm -hmm. uh, on the market. And, and this is something that is responding to the need of the SMB. So, you know, at the end of the day, you need a killer product and a killer team to win. And right. so, there you go. And these aren't necessarily companies. I mean, so the idea is this is attractive to small businesses because they, as you were saying, they're just too small fry for the big banks. It does, it's not wor worth it for them. It's not, a, it's not an issue of credit worthiness. It's not an issue of credit worthiness. In fact, most of these small businesses, are, our average, you know, it, you know, if you wanted to put on some sort of comparable measure to, uh, to you know, a personal credit score, it's typically upper, you know, it, it's, it's above sort of average um, credit uh, in the market. Um, so you might equate it to some FICO score of 700 or something along those lines. So these are not low credit uh, quality customers. These are folks um, who have challenges simply because banks are not going to spend the time with them because they can't figure out how to acquire them as customers and they can't figure out how to, how to really have the right OPEX structure around it. If you're going for a $3 million loan or you're going for a $30,000 loan from the same bank, it's going to cost that bank just as much mm -hmm. to serve both customers. So which one are they going to go for? And now, now you're sort of uh, striking more deals with actual banks that you were sort of displacing in a sense before, or at least, you know, serving as sort of a complimentary. I think just showing the way okay. is more the way I like to think about it. Okay. <laughs> but no, I mean, how, how do you work with them? And, and, and also, I'm sorry, I'm not, you know, was this part of your, how did you work together to sort of, do you, I'm assuming SoftBank's got, you know, partners left and right or, you know, relationships. So uh, I'll let Rob explain what, what to do with, with, uh, with banking partners. Um, but of course, for us, it's highly interesting um, that not only Rob has a product which is addressing the need of customers in the US, mm -hmm. but he's able to leverage like the back end, the technology, and the know-how 
as a platform mm -hmm. and to help other partners to achieve the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's another way to scale. Sure. Uh, in, in general, just to, to track a step back, is we're interested in business that are going to, to scale to become like a leading player in the sector mm -hmm. or in the industry. And you know, Rob has a smart way here to kind of scale his business and address like the need of customers that are like in Europe for some of them. Uh, through that platform play. You want to explain? Do, do you see a, a day when you're mostly working with banks rather than just the companies themselves, or it's 50-50, or what's the vision here? That's, that's a great question. I mean, I, because of the scale of these banks, I mean, one thing we want to make sure, first of all, we don't enter into every deal. In fact, there's been many more deals where either the partner has said they don't want to work with us or we don't want to work with the partner because we have some very simple rules. One is it's got to be an automated experience for the small business. We're not interested in helping you automate some specific manual processes. That's not what we're best at. Um, we want to make sure that we're partners in it, so our, um, our actually our brand is included in the customer experience. And that's not because we have an ego about having that, mm -hmm. but when you put the Cabbage logo on the experience, you're treating us as a partner, not as a vendor. Uh, and we also want to be able to participate in the book. So there's still many, many small businesses that banks, even with our technology, are still going to say no to. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to have the opportunity to step in and actually help say yes for those customers. So this is a way for us to expand our footprint uh, globally, uh, and we're only working with a few players per market. Uh, right now we're launched in Spain, UK, Canada, Mexico, Italy, and France. We have deals signed in other Latin American uh, countries and, and in Asia. Uh, and so you'll see us expand pretty dramatically over the next um, 12 to 18 months. How many employees do you have at this point? Uh, we just passed 400, which scared me to death. Uh, when I when I realized that, <laughs> um, and I, are you profitable? Uh, we are. Um, we are. In fact, we're yes, we're cash flow uh, positive. The lending business is is very profitable. Um, we're still investing into this platform business with our partners. Um, but again, we're you know we're working to get to a point as as David puts where um, we're really serving as many small businesses globally as possible. Our goal. Um, over the next 5, 10, or 15 years is to make sure that we're a meaningful part uh, of a small business's life every single day. Uh, we want to be the, not just the financial operating system, but really the operating system that, that they come to rely upon. And do you do that as a public company? Um, you know, I, you know I, think, I think it's a situation where we're, you know, what I love about partnering with SoftBank is um, they're able to partner with a company that has achieved scale, but is still at the beginning. Uh, and the nice thing about that is that's a really important partner to have for us um, because we believe that um, there's a lot more that we need to get accomplished before um, people really understand who we are, what we stand for, what we can accomplish, and, and what the future will look like. And I think, you know, the public question comes um, when um, folks uh, who I talk with can repeat the story back to me better than I can share the story with them. Um, well, so you're suggesting that SoftBank has a long timeline, which I know, like his uh, uh, Maso Yoshi-sen's uh, what Alibaba steak, he's only sold like a tiny bit of it over the years to finance. Uh, no, th that's right. So we, I think that's what dif I mean. That's one of the things that differentiate us versus other kind of capital partners out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very long horizon, um, and so you know, Alib you mentioned Alibaba. It's a great example. We invested like 17 years ago. Uh, we sold only, I think, it's 10 percent of the stake. Uh, over the years because we needed to find them something recently, but that's about it. We still own like 30% of the business. Um, and so for us, uh, you know, we want to be partnering with entrepreneurs and, you know, like a management team of, of, of the company we're backing for the very long run. Mm -hmm. You know, the analogy I use is that, hey, the entrepreneur is captain of the ship, if you want, and we agree on the horizon. You see that island, you see that land in the, in the far end. Um, and we want to be on that ship with that entrepreneur, like, you know, for, 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 the whole trip, for the whole trip, if you want. You know, uh, of course, if you look in front of the boat, these waves that go up and down, up and down, up and down, and it's a bit of a scary view. Right. And, and you don't want, um, you know, we, we want to be partner with, with those entrepreneurs. And, and I guess for, for the entrepreneur perspective, is reassuring that they have somebody on their boat that is going to partner with them for the next 5, 10, 15 years, rather than thinking, hey, you know, this is... Um, this is a calm sea, or this is the up wave, and I'm going to jump ship. Right. Um, and so, yeah, the long term is very important for us. And, you know, we realize it takes a lot of effort uh, to build those businesses over the years as well. I'm sorry, I can't see, like, if they're going to try to get me off the stage or not. But There's no timer, sorry. Um, oh, Unlimited. Okay, great, great. <laughs> so I did want to ask, when you say long time horizon, what does that mean exactly? Because I know that... Um, 
quite a bit of the vision fund has already been committed. So do you have sort of, do your LPs, have they given you more than sort of the standard 10 year time horizon or are they, what are they expecting? Well, I, I don't think the normal horizon is 10 years, in fact, like for, for most funds, uh, but uh, the, the, the funding for, for uh, the vision fund is 12 years plus two. Uh, and so that's a long time run. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think our funders have been quite clear that, you know, we might raise other funds. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we don't think like the, the timing of the fund is going to be a problem to stay invested in businesses. Mm -hmm. That's where we're coming from. We're coming from, we want to partner with people for the long run. Right. We want them to win. So. And forgive me for squeezing in this question, but you are from SoftBank. You're focused on f fintech. You don't have anything to worry about with Rob here. <laughs> but you, do, um, you also invested in, in SoFi, another online company that's having some problems. Um, is there anything there, you know, I feel like there's only so much due diligence an, a, a, an investor can do, but were there any sort of um, early indications there might be an issue with the, like the culture of that firm? And either way, how do you feel about the, the firm's prospects at this point? Yeah, so we, we SoftBank is an investor in SoFi, and, you know, uh, as you noted, they, they recently uh, went through some cultural issues that are still being investigated, so I'm on the board of SoFi. Uh, I mean, the business is doing tremendously well. Uh, Mac Cagney, we, which was the CEO of SoFi and left us like five weeks ago, six weeks ago, uh, you know, was, was a, a, a great entrepreneur. But, you know, if there is something to learn from that process is that culture is very important. And, and you know, this is something to watch for when you invest in companies. Not everything can be due diligence, I agree with you. Uh, but as an entrepreneur, kind of setting up the right tone, setting up the right culture for your whole organization, is something that, that you need to do, which is part of the game, and that might be like one of the elements that, that make a company less uh, successful than another's. Or if the culture is right, you know, if you look at the Google and the Apple of this world, they get the culture right. Yeah? So, yeah, so that, that's the learning of this process. You know, on your point on due diligence, I, I don't think you can due diligence everything. Uh, we, we are doing like um, very stringent due diligence when we invest in companies. As, mm -hmm. as Ron knows, it takes like weeks and weeks. Um, and, and, you know, but you, you don't find anything, you, you don't find everything through that. Do you think, so you have a great relationship and presumably with the, the board as well. I'm just wondering, generally speaking, I always wonder if VC should be talking to more employees. Is that something that, like, you do? Because, like, in the SoFi example, maybe that would have been uncovered faster if... No, we, we, we do talk to employees when we do due diligence, of course. We meet with the management team. We, we, we meet like key people in the company because we need to be sure they are doing their job. We need to, to build a relationship when we're investing. Yeah? Are we uh, going to talk to everybody that work at uh, Operation Center in, in, in Sodoma? Probably not because we can't. Um, you know, um, so far, I have like thousands of employees. We can't talk to any of them, as, as I'm sure you will understand. Um, and so there you go. I know it's complicated, and you two clearly have a great relationship, and I'm so glad that I was able to talk to you both today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Learned a lot.